Hi guys and welcome to the Asiana Bridal Beauty Tutorial. My name is Roshni from Roshni Hair and Makeup and we're here today to create a look for a competition winner that we ran with Asiana TV for a bride to be for an exclusive makeover. Our winner is Savita who's here with us today. We're looking to create a look for her that's innovative, contemporary, yet traditional with the times and appropriate for a bride on her big day. I've prepared Savita's skin beforehand with the Estee Lauder Perfectly Clean Triple Action Cleanser to ensure that we've got rid of any grease grime and we've got a nice clean slate to start. After cleansing the skin on a at least a weekly or a fortnightly basis it's important to look at sort of more intense products that will look to rejuvenate the skin, lift the skin, work on fine lines because you want to address a lot of those problem areas before the big day. So for this I would recommend the Creme de la Mer Lifting and Firming Mask which actually addresses a lot of um, those problem areas. I'm now going to start preparing Savita's skin using a moisture erasing fluid by MAC Lightful Marine Bright Formula Softening Lotion which contains properties of seaweed and vitamin C. I'll soak some of the lotion onto a cotton pad and I'll run it gently. This will instantly add a radiance to her face, hydrate her skin, tackling any dryness, adding hydration. Leading up to the wedding, any bride's going to be under a lot of stress, so it's really important that they do pay a lot of attention to their skincare. And generally, they run off their feet and they do forget about it. So having a bottle of the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Eye Serum every night and just religiously using it, you'll see such a huge difference in the quality of your skin. Taking a small amount, just pat it, under the eye. Like with a lot of skincare products, don't expect to see results straight away. You need to use them continuously and as part of your daily skincare routine. A lot of brides do tend to have breakouts, um, blemishes that they need to deal with. So coupled with a lot of the skincare products that we've discussed, um, you might need the instant zap. What we would recommend is the or Origins Super Spot Remover Blemish Treatment Gel. We now move on to priming the skin. The look that we're trying to create today has to have beautiful skin base that where the eyes are quite powerful and the lips are a little bit nude today, we want to keep the skin really fluid, really balanced um, and having a really beautiful natural glow that works beautifully on, on camera for photographs. So for this we're using the Estee Lauder Illuminating Perfecting Primer. Like all primers, this will work beautifully to fill in lines, pores, and coupled with the illuminating properties, give you a beautiful glow to the skin. Now that we've prepared Savita's skin with the primer and moisturizers, we need to move on to the concealer. It's really important to conceal in the right shade, um, specifically for bridal makeup, because They'll, all eyes will be on the bride. She needs to make sure that she looks perfect and we want to make sure that we have got colour correctors in, in place. So generally they tend to have a lot of dark circles and if they do have pigmentation you want to use quite a high consistency con a concealer that does have an orange tone to it um, purely because it will counter effect and counteract the lights. For the concealer we'll be using the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place High Cover Concealer in Medium Deep. When using concealers, I think it's really important to get the correct shade. Otherwise, you'll have areas that will look very ashy. The consistency of double wear is actually quite rich, so applying a little bit goes a long way. The foundation. The product that I'm recommending here has real long stay um, longevity properties. It's Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour wear hydrating foundation. With this product it does have the longevity but also it's got a really light feel to it um, and it doesn't feel thick and it certainly doesn't apply. It's quite light and airy but it's got good coverage and it's hydrating. What I really like about this product in particular that it has an oil free formula. The skin's going to look great and shine free for a long part of her event. What I find with this foundation as well is it starts to work with the sebaceous glands of the skin and it will come to life in a little while. I think um, that is exactly what brides are looking for. Skin that looks alive and young and youthful. To set the foundation of Vita's face, I've opted for the Estee Lauder Perfecting Loose Powder. It has a really light, airy consistency which will still keep her skin looking natural and dewy. 
now that we've got Savita's base ready, we need to work on her eyes. I need to prime her eyes to make sure that we've got good staying power for the eyeshadow. For this, I'm using the Smashbox Photo Finish Lid Primer. This is fantastic because it has HD photogenic properties which work brilliant for photographs, camera, and they're anti-reflective. For bridal eyeshadows, it's always been the notion to wear golds and reds, coppers. However, with a lot of the embroidery that's out there at the moment, there's a lot of antique work. So to complement the antique work, having quite dark, um, earthy toned khakis, maroon eyes, um, works very well and works beautifully with the jewellery and accessories as well. For the eyes, we're going to be working with a Bobbi Brown collection. The first one that we're using is Bobbi Brown Sparkle Eyeshadow in All Spice. The second we're looking at is the Bobbi Brown Metallic Eyeshadow in Forest. And the third that we're looking at is a much more, it's a matte colour for um, the sockets and the outer corners, which is the eyeshadow by Bobbi Brown in Mahogany. I'm going to start by applying the All Spice all over the lid, patting it in as I work from the ball of the eye, working my way up to the socket, but being mindful not to go over the socket line. This particular eyeshadow is stunning because it has small sparkle properties which when they catch the light, they're not as heavy as glitter. I've applied the All Spice pretty much all over the lid, locating and isolating it to the eye uh, ball area. I'm now going in with the mahogany, which is a matte eyeshadow, which I want to use on the outer corners and just up into the socket to give a bit more definition and more focus on the eye. I'm taking the mahogany and I'm working it again into the bottom, close to the lashes. This time I'm going to take it all the way Oh no, this is going to give the shape of the eye a beautiful definition. I'm going to go in here now with the metallic colour, which is a beautiful forest green khaki, applying that as close to the middle of the eye and as close to the lashes. And working my way just along the base. Um, and actually this is very different to what a lot of the brides are used to. It's very modern, very contemporary. To frame the eyes now and complete the look, I want to give the deep intensity. And this can be achieved by using the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Gel Liner in Black Ink. Some of the properties of this one is that it does have staying power. You need to work with it quite quickly, but the benefits are it's not going to go anywhere. To add a little bit of um, bridal glamour to her look, I'm looking to add the MAC Reflex Glitter in Antique Gold in the middle of her eyeball. This is really pigmented, so a little will go a long way to give a beautiful high impact sparkly eye. To complete the look, the bride doesn't go out without lashes, it's a really big part of her look. For this, I'd like to use the MAC uh, range of eyelashes that will add luster, volume, uh, give finesse to the look. If the lashes are too big, they can easily be cut. Um, and the key to applying a really good set of lashes is to have them as close to the inside uh, and fitting the length of the eye. A little trick that I've learned over the years with regards to um, lashes is brides do find them a little bit heavy especially if they're not used to wearing them so I do like to lock the client's own lashes and the um, eyelashes a fake eyelashes together using mascara for this I'm looking to use a Smashbox full exposure waterproof mascara waterproof being the key word here um, for this teary brides just sealing the two together and instantly the visibility will better in a zigzag motion using the same finesse the eye area. Now that we've completed Savita's eyes, it's important to frame the face. For this I'll be using the Bobbi Brown Brow Kit in Saddle and Mahogany. It comes in two colours, so it's really nice to blend the two together so that you don't have a harsh block of colour, but more of a graduated natural look to the eye. This also comes with a nippy little brow brush and tweezers for those emergency hairs that you need to pluck away. I'm framing the brow 
mixing the two colors together. It's really important that you do follow the natural brow shape and work in small strokes so that you're working with the shape of the brow. Now that we've completed the eye area, framed the brows, we need to move on to the completion of the face. We've applied the foundation so we've evened out her skin tone. We need to give definition for such strong, powerful eyes. Therefore, it's important to contour the face. For this, I'll be using the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Sculpture in Intensity Number no. 2. It comes in two colours, one which is the light using for highlighting and the darker colour um, for contouring and chiselling and adding the three dimensions. I'm working in quite a harsh but defined line from the corner of the ear, working in a downward motion towards the lip. You don't want to take the brush as close to the lip area and blend it in an upward and downward motion, but still keeping the intensity localized. I'll use the same method and work downwards and outwards under the jaw, to the back of the ear and onto the neck. I'm gonna take a lighter highlighter Sort of a creamy silvery colour. I'm going to place that softly just above the cheek. This will give you the illusion of having really high defined cheekbones, which is a must for having such strong eyes. I'm going to go back in with the darker on the outside of the nose, taking it right up to the bridge and into the brow, blending it. The product is beautiful because it gives it leaves a soft sheen and yet it's not very heavy. To complete the look, we want to add a glow to the face and bring some colour back into um, the cheeks. I've chosen a sort of pinky um, mauvey colour which complements the colour that we've used in the socket from earlier. This uh, blusher is from Bobbi Brown in uh, Nectar. It's a matte finish and I'm just going to dust it slightly over the contouring that we did earlier and bringing dragging the colour down into the cheek, in the apple of the cheek. It's really important that you work in round circular motions for this, so that you're still invigorating the skin and not having a harsh block of colour on the side of the face. Sort of a nice flushed look. What I love to have on um, all bridal looks um, is a, a sheer glow that just sort of resides on the face, predominantly on the um, the temples and the cheekbones. For the highlighter, I'll be using the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick Compact in Rose. It comes in a brick format in, um, and it's got sort of a variation of different colors and it picks up lots of particles. And it looks great when you apply this because you haven't got a nice chunky block of color, but more like an iridescent glow. And of course, the good thing with this is, um, if I wanted to use any one of these individually, you can still use them. The lightest color, just on the top of the brow in the arch which I feel sort of it amalgamates with all of the rest of the colors and it's just got a real soft pink glow to it. To complete Savita's look we want to apply a really soft rosy lip color which is quite nude and in line with the, the pinks that we've used everywhere else and keeping the eyes quite bold. I'm going to start by hydrating the lips using the creme de la mer lip balm which I've applied all over. You can use this daily as well and on its own. I'm going to now line the lips with the Bobbi Brown Lip Liner in Rose. I'm filling the lip bin as well. Now I'm going to apply a lipstick to complete the look, which is the Clinique Long Last Soft Matte in Matte Beauty, which is a soft rose peachy colour, and that complements and brings the whole lip together without the lips looking too prominent on the face. You could also then complement it with the Estee Lauder Pure Colour Lip Gloss in Nude Rose Shine. However, for this look, I'm going to leave this quite soft and matte and leave the emphasis on the eyes. That now completes the look for Savita and we're going to move on to the hair. I'm looking to create an unstructured bun for Savita that will have a lot of volume. Sort of a hair design that suits her face, frames her face well, but also complements the makeup and the jewellery. So I'm brushing her hair through using the Aveda Paddle Brush just to get all the hair together. I'm going to section off the front part of her hair. This is the hair that I'll use for dressing, but for the back I'll be creating a low bun 
So to add a little bit of that stickiness that I need and give it that full form body, I'm using the Bumble and Bumble Thickening Full Form Mousse to sculpt and hold the hair in its place. A small amount goes a very long way to apply a lot. I'm just working this roughly through the hair. Before I start to apply any heat products onto the hair, it's really important that I protect the hair. So for this, I'm going to be using the Odrum Leave-In Preheat Styler, which also acts as a leave-in conditioner. Spray a little bit and lock the ends. And using a heated product, I want to just add a little bit of a lift and a bit of a curl before I set the hair. To set the curls, it's better to work in small individual sections rather than the whole hair because if you do make a mistake you can go back to it. I'm going to set these curls individually using the Bumble and Bumble Spray de la Mode hairspray. It's a very lightweight and it doesn't have that sticky feel to it. Once I've got the hair in the structure that I need it to be in, I'll be using the Aveda Brilliant Finishing Gloss to add the sheen and finesse to the hair but also bringing all the hair follicles together um, and giving a beautiful shine. And this is great for um, camera because you don't want to see a halo of little flyaway hairs. So here we are, just doing the final touches on our bride, Savita, the Asiana.tv competition winner. Before we complete the look, what I'd like to say is it's been an honor doing your makeover and um, just to add that a lot of brides have complexes about color and discoloration on their skin, the decolletage, their back, they might have pigmentation issues. Um, and this is a must for all um, brides to sort of just have that the confidence is the MAC face and body foundation that you can use on those areas. Um, cover it up and it goes a very long way. It's got the longevity as well and it doesn't um, sort of stain the clothing. To top it off, it's beautiful fragrance which has a warm spicy scent. It's the Tom Ford Black Orchid which will complete the look for our bride.